Hi, welcome to Horse Hour. I've got a very exciting day today because I am at World Horse Welfare. I've been dying to come down here for ages and I'm with the lovely Anna Hammond, who's Chief Vet. Now you are based at the University of Bristol. What exactly is your position? So I'm in charge of the first opinion practice at the University of Bristol and I have to teach the undergraduates to become graduates and the vets of the future. Um, And we bring them down here um, several times during their training, um, partly for handling and partly to understand the complex problems that we have with the welfare horses. Mm. Um, And also we see medical diseases down here that we don't see elsewhere, sadly. Really? Because where where are we? I know I'm in Somerset, but whereabouts in Somerton, is it? Yeah, we're in Somerton. And, um, close to the well we're in the middle of the Somerset levels um, and we have a farm or we don't have a farm World Horse Welfare has a farm here that can house up to I think a hundred horses um, in terms of size but they are obviously quite struggling for staff with that number of horses um, and like every charity we're hugely inundated um, uh, all the time with new arrivals wanting to come in mm. um, and we tend to deal with two extremes we have the extremely emaciated um, desperately poor condition and neglected we have one at the moment called Tippy who was abandoned on a rubbish tip um, mm. who has a body condition score of kind of a half um, who was so weak she couldn't stand up for a little while without help Mm-hmm. Um, who's now starting to put on weight, fortunately. And then we have the other extreme of Dave, who came in massively obese, mm-hmm. who had severe laminitis associated with his obesity um, and has now lost over 80 kilos and is trotting around and starting to do some work. So That's amazing. It's great. It's really good and it's fabulous to see and he's the best pony. We love yeah. him. <laughs> and then, so when you fix them, yeah. um, is, is it then they go on to be rehomed? Because I've seen a lovely little Shetland that looks quite new that I think I'd like to take with me today? They're all here to be rehomed. We try not to keep any of them here. The idea is that we rehabilitate them, we sort out their medical problems, sort out their psychological problems. We have a farrier who sorts out their feet and a physiotherapist who helps rehabilitate them back into hopefully work and if not field companion status. Um, And generally we try and turn them all around and and they have a pretty good success rate here. The girls are amazing. Mm. Well it's just I can't believe how much it's buzzing here right now. I mean there are horses everywhere. The team are so confident and I noticed there's a lot of uh, younger vets that are around the corner as well what are they doing here we have a bunch of new vets or well they're about to be new vets so qualify in about a month and a half Mm -hmm. Um, and they are here to just help me with some of the more routine jobs that we do down here so they're helping me um, under supervision look after some of the horse's teeth Um, uh, so they have we have one qualified vet and a bunch of junior vets um, and I have some of the junior vets with me um, helping to do some of the routine care because not very long they'll be doing that out for themselves in a field. Which would be quite scary for them, I think. You know, first time by themselves, it's like they don't have the parent holding their hand, do they? I think it's a big leap of faith for them, yes. So we're trying to let them have um, a little bit of responsibility here, but under, you know, with the watchful eye of Mm. supervision at the moment. A bit like my husband when I'm asking him to feed the horses, you know, he's allowed a little bit, he's allowed to give them hay, but only under supervision. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) He's lucky to be allowed that much. (laughs) So you mentioned earlier you have different types of diseases down here. Mm. What's different between here and anywhere else? Well we see a lot of horses here that have quite severe liver disease because they've been eating ragwort Mm. out Um, and actually what we've been seeing and it's kind of new to us is um, foals coming in with ragwort poisoning so I'm investigating the possibility that they're um, getting that through their mother. Um, The research is not there yet, but um, it's something that we're going to be looking into. Mm. And also we do see a thing called refeeding syndrome, which is very important should you come in contact with a welfare case. Because when you have a horse with a body condition score of a half or even one, you want to throw food at them. Mm. Um, But there was quite a lot of research done, uh, sadly, after the Holocaust, when a lot of human beings died when they were emaciated and then were suddenly fed a lot of food, then they got really sick. Mm. Um, And there's this kind of vague syndrome we don't really know much about called refeeding syndrome. So um, if you do have a particularly skinny horse under your care, feed them hay. Don't feed them anything else to start with yeah. um, until their guts get accustomed to it. And the other problem we have is we have a lot of horses with quite severe parasite burdens mm. um, that require quite a long time for their guts to heal before they can actually cope with food 
proper right. food. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the message to everybody out there is he only <laughs> until um, and, until we've sorted out their guts a bit. Mm. And we, we, there are a lot of people that want to help horses um, and they see horses that they think need to be rescued and they've contacted charities like yourself. Yeah. But at the same time, they are feeding and they are going near them. Some of these horses aren't actually welfare cases. Yeah. Um, and then you get into disputes. It's very... Yeah. It, if you think that... Or if What would you say to people that have seen a horse that they think needs rescuing? What would be your kind of three checklists? So I would... Um, first of all, I would speak to the field officers of the charity. Um, we... World Horse Welfare... I'm not, I'm not part of World Horse Welfare, but World Horse Welfare, the charity, has field officers all across the UK who are very experienced. They know the lay of the land and they're horse people. Mm. Some of the other charities have officers who are not specific horse people and so maybe wouldn't quite understand the needs of a horse. If you have any concerns, I would be speaking to them first. Mm. Um, and they, they, there are a lot of them and they're very good and they will give great advice. Um, I think people quite often get very worried about things that we would be less concerned about. Um, and I know that, for example, I have people phoning me up saying a horse needs to be rescued because it's got a little bump on its face or it's got a bit of a snotty nose, that sort of thing. And that's not necessarily a rescue situation. Um, but I think that there are other cases where it's pretty obvious you've got an emaciated horse in the middle of a field full of ragwort and that does need to be brought to the attention mm. of the charities. And, but the first thing I would do if I had any concerns was phone up the World Horse Welfare field officers um, who will go and assess the situation mm -hmm. and they're usually very good at getting in there finding the owners um, and finding out the backstory because there's often a backstory sadly. Mm. I find it really heartbreaking. I think it's amazing what you're doing here. I've been watching you trot up some of the horses. What are you looking for? Is this the horses that are here right now that we've seen today? Are they first timers? Have they just arrived? No, the horses we're looking at today are ones who've been here for quite some time. And um, the ones we've been trotting up just now are the ones who hopefully will be going, well, they are now going onto the website um, so that we mm. can promote them for rehoming. Mm. Oh. And we've got quite a few. You have, haven't you? Different breeds, different ages. Yeah, um, everything from Shetland to massive big horse yeah. do you know the story behind the little Shetland because I just I love him yeah she, she? Uh, oh, it's she a girl. yeah little girl um she came in as a, a neglect case um being just abandoned um and she has very severe conformational problems so she's not going to be able to do pretty much any exercise because her legs are way too wonky um, but she's fine for wandering around a field and being a pet and a companion and so she's um, she actually has a home to go to um, oh she, no really yeah. I was really hoping I was going to ask them if I could take her home no there are others though who haven't yet got a home but she has a home um, and she's very cute and she is really well behaved but her legs go off in very strange angles Mm. But as long as she's happy running around a field or walking around a field, that's mm. fine. But I'm presuming for each case that you have here, there are ongoing things that owners need to take on board if they take them home. Like she can't be ridden, the no. Shetland, she can't do any work. But if, if that's the case, do we have to monitor laminitis? Yes, with any Shetland I'd be monitoring laminitis and the mm. field officers here do go out and do um, inspections every six months to make sure that they are being kept well. One of the problems big problems we have with horses going out here is people think they're doing the right thing and they overfeed them. Mm. So we go from a welfare, really skinny horse to a, a, a fat horse with laminitis and mm. that happens a bit too often actually yeah. um, and the welfare officers have to get involved and actually sometimes we've taken them back. Oh really? Mm. Um, because people are quite keen to kill with kindness. Mm. Anna, I'm so grateful for your time. I know that you're really busy today and you've got vet students and physiotherapists and horses coming in. But thank you so much for the work that you do and for talking to us today. No problem. Nice to meet you. And you. Right. We will show you around the rest of World Horse Welfare in Somerton.